Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Five Nights at Freddy's. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we're going to be getting right into it. We're going to be looking at Foxy. He's going to clap the cheeks of Bonnie. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, no, not really. We're going to be looking at the matchup of the week, of course. Today's Tuesday. Um, to kick things off, it's definitely not going to be Milf and Pussy. I think that's going to be a one-sided match. Same with Karen and J-Bay. Um, Toxic and Mr. Steeler Girl is going to be close, but it's not really going to be as important of a matchup, or at least as uh, good of a matchup, I don't think, as some of these other ones. Same with Scrambled and Big Yawners. They're both going to be even teams, but I still think there's at least two matchups that are going to be better. It came down to either me or Booty Basher and Rictatorship versus PMC. I, w I thought about it, and I do think I'm going to end up going with PMC and Rictatorship for today. I think me and Booty Basher might have the higher scoring shootout, but overall, Rictatorship versus PMC is going to mean a lot more. It might end up being a lot closer. Um, it is for a division game. The current standings on everything, as you look here, you have Rictatorship who's 2-1 and one on top of the division, but it is a very tight division. Everyone's 2-1 and one except for PMC who's 1-2. and two. But if PMC were to win and Rictatorship loses, that would drop Rictatorship to under PMC. So these guys are potentially playing for first in the division. There's a lot on the line here. Overall, I figured it would be a better matchup of the week thinking about it. Anyway, let's get right on into it. Um, we have the quarterbacks will kick things off with the quarterbacks. Rictatorship has Dak Prescott and Jordan Love. Um, his only other one is Kyler Murray, who's currently not set to play. Uh, while PMC has Patrick Mahomes and Jared Goff. These are the same quarterbacks they had during the rankings videos whenever I made the rankings. Whenever I made the rankings, like I was saying, sorry about that. Anyway, uh... Yeah, whenever I was making the rankings, these are the same guys. I actually had Rictatorship ranked at number 9th. Keep in mind that is a little bit hindered because Kyler Murray still isn't playing yet, so take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. But overall, uh, we'll talk about the guys in detail of who they have and all that stuff. And then PMC I had ranked 3rd. Um, compared to what I was expecting whenever I was doing the rankings, Dak Prescott has underperformed a little bit where he's done okay in terms of real life but in terms of fantasy he's not doing much because well he played like shit in week three week two he did good week one he just bullied the giants so it's a little bit disappointing while jordan love on the opposite hand has actually been very very good for dictatorship throughout this year 29 26 27 i was not expecting that i thought jordan love was going to be one of the bottom five quarterbacks with ease but he's going out there he's impressing he had and on top of that he's getting christian watson back so Jordan Love's actually looking pretty dang good. And it is going to be interesting here for the Thursday night matchup. Both of these guys actually have their quarterbacks going head-to-head -head with PMC having Jared Goff here. Well, not him. Jared Goff here, who has been looking solid. Week 1, he was a bit rusty, but weeks 2 and 3, he's looked pretty damn good in both real life and in fantasy. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. They're going to be going head-to-head -head on Thursday night this week. And then PMC also had Patrick Mahomes, who is going out there and doing Patrick Mahomes things. Obviously, about 28, 31 points a week, even with the dog shit receiving core he has. Can't complain there. He's doing pretty damn good. But overall, the quarterbacks definitely go towards PMC here. Next up, looking at the running backs. At the time of me making the rankings, I had Rick Tatership ranked at 5th and PMC ranked at 11th. Since all that, uh, since the rankings happened, Rick Tatership had the addition of Kenneth Walker and Joshua Kelly, he lost James Conner, Tyler Algier, A.J. Dillon, and Raheem Mostert. Overall, I think that's a downgrade, because one, I don't think Josh Kelly's going to be really doing anything at all. If I were you, I'd probably cut him, but um, Kenneth Walker's been doing pretty damn good, don't get me wrong, but James Conner has as well, and so has Raheem Mostert, so they kind of cancel that out. But overall, you did downgrade, um, while on the other hand, we'll get to PMC in a second, who he actually did upgrade. But for what it's worth, your running backs going into this right now, you do still have Rashad White, who did pretty bad for week three. He did bad week one, but week two he's doing pretty good, or he did pretty good against the shit Chicago Bears. But overall, he's been a little disappointing. Maybe he can pick things up against the Saints. I kind of doubt it, though. They got a good linebacker, good D-line. Um, and then Kenneth Walker's been a beast, though. Like I said, even though... You got you got that downgrade because of Connor. He has been a beast. Um, 
And then I think that's all the running backs you're going to be playing, at least for this week, because Taylor's going to be out with an injury. Like I said, Kelly really isn't going to do anything, even if Eckler's out. I've kind of made that mistake already in a few leagues um, with Joshua Kelly. He's just playing like shit. I thought he'd do more. Um, PMC this week is going to be using Isaiah Pacheco, who has been on and off, to say the least. He's had 9 points, 8 points, which is okay. He had a 15-point game. That's good. You want to see more of that 15-point game, but at least you know he's not going to have a bad game based on this little sample size. However, he hasn't played any good defenses yet. That concerns me, so be careful about starting him against the Jets. I'll say that. Um, then PMC had the addition of Raheem Mostert, who last week decided he was just going to turn into fucking Mewtwo. You know, he, he's just going to be everything. Uh, and we'll get to another guy that PMC actually has the addition of, but yeah, he's been very good this fantasy football season. Do I think it's going to continue? Not quite, at least not for long. He might have a few more weeks like this, but I don't think this is going to continue. But for what sample size we have, ranked number 11 overall, that's counting quarterbacks, that's counting everything. You're looking pretty fucking happy with what you got. Um, And then you also have the addition of Devon Achain, a cane, whatever you want to call him, who comes in and goes from 1.9 to 62.3. If the, if that's not proof this dude is on some sort of crack, I don't know what is. I don't somebody needs to drug test this dude not because of how his performance was, but because he's black. Um overall, yeah, 18 for 203 yards, two touchdowns, four catches, 30 yards, another two touchdowns. Yeah, it, somebody drug test the guy. Um you did also have the addition of Joe Mixon who I think he's been doing okay, but not really anything crazy. He's been getting close to his projections on a week-to-week basis. Um, you'd hope to see more receptions out of him overall. That's kind of what a lot of people drafted him for because he's not getting too many touchdowns out there. There is some upside in that the offense is actually starting to look a bit better for the Bengals. Week 1, only 3 points. Week 2, they had 24 points, but it wasn't because of the offense. The offense looked horrible against the Ravens. Um, they're looking better, at least. They look better. They've been looking a little better each week. Last night against the Rams, even though they only had 19 points, they still definitely look better than they have in the past weeks. So that's something to look forward to if you're even planning on starting them this week. It looks like you have them on the bench for now. Um, and then PMC also had the loss of Javante Williams and Tank Bigsby. Tank Bigsby is not doing anything right now. That's nothing to be concerned of. Javante Williams is doing eh. He's doing worse than Joe Mixon, so overall that's an upgrade, but he I have him on my team actually. He's really not doing anything special. He's startable if you need a running back, but he's probably not going to go out there and win you a game or anything by any means. Um, and that's about it for the running backs. If I had to lean towards one direction or another in terms of just the running backs alone, uh, in terms of starters, I'd say Rick Tatorship has the edge, but if you want to count the flex guys like a, a chain, uh, the edge goes to PMC just because he has more guys playing overall, but in terms of just the starting two, yeah, I'm going to lean towards dictatorship, but overall, a little bit towards PMC just because of the sheer volume he has, Um, and then we'll look at receivers, dictatorship actually has not made any moves in terms of the receivers, but he has CD Lamb, who's looked pretty good so far this season, Uh, he had, he had a iffy week three, and then a week one, that's solid that you would have wished for a bit more but it's the same thing where they're playing against these garbage teams Prescott did bad last week it wasn't Lamb's fault he was out there doing his thing but it is a little concerning that Prescott did bad because you do have Prescott too but overall besides the last week he's done pretty damn good throughout the season he's getting a lot of tar or he's getting a decent amount of targets to say the least he should be getting more but oh well Lamb is doing good He's probably the best receiver in this matchup, to say the least. Even though he is playing a tough New England defense, he's probably going to be going up against rookie Christian Gonzalez. That'll be a fun matchup to watch. Um, And overall, yeah, he's been okay. You'd probably hope for more. I think with both Prescott and Lamb, though, they'll do better as the season goes on. I think these have been kind of a few fluke weeks. Drake London, on the other hand, I'm not going to tell you I'm looking happy about things. He's a solid receiver, don't get me wrong, but in an offense that has, well, no offense, they have B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier over here uh, choking each other out for who's going to get the ball, 
which it seems like it's going to be getting to Bijan a lot more. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. It, it's looking like they're going to be a lot more run heavy or check down heavy, and the offense can't move as it is. So Ritter is just ass. <laughs> the running back game is good, so they've just been kind of tunnel vision in that run game. Kyle Pitts can't do anything. Uh, the other receivers on the team can't do anything. It, it's The running backs are nothing with this offense in terms of fantasy. Right now, I wouldn't even start Drake London. I don't know what other options you might have, but yeah, things are not looking good. Am I saying to cut him? No. In the off chance, maybe they start using Heineke or maybe Ritter starts doing better. Maybe London has some upside, but yeah, it's not looking great. I'm not going to lie. You have Marquise Brown, who, surprisingly enough, without uh, Kyler Murray, with fucking Joshua Dobbs, he's the mixed Mr. Clean. Is That's what I like to call him. Just look up a picture of him, and you'll understand that joke. But um, he's actually been doing pretty damn good without Kyler Murray. I thought he was going to struggle real hard throughout the year, but he's actually looked pretty good. And once Kyler Murray comes back, okay, yeah, I think Marquise Brown is actually going to be a very fucking good fantasy option, to be honest. Um, but for this week... He's playing against that San Francisco 49ers defense. He did good against the Dallas defense, which yeah, I think is a little bit of a fluke, but you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. But it is concerning against the 49ers defense. These are some very tough matchups for Rick Tatership as it is. Um, pretty much around the board for this offense, except for Kenneth Walker. He has a nice matchup against the Giants. Um, and then you also have Christian Watson, who's supposed to be returning on Thursday. It's not confirmed, but everybody's saying he's likely to return. We haven't seen him play yet. We'll see how good he does. He is going to be returning against a good matchup against the weak pass defense of the Lions. They have good safeties, but their corners are dog shit, and so are their linebackers. But overall, these are your receivers. You have not made any moves since then. I think you might also have Traylon Burks on the bench, but he's been ass. I would honestly consider maybe trading him or cutting him. To be honest, he might have an argument to keep him in in case, say, Will Levis goes in or something and he starts being good. That's about the highest upside I can even see for this guy. Because even when Hopkins is out, he isn't doing shit. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad for him. And then PMC Wagner had, or has, Devontae Smith, who's been cooking up for the first two weeks, but I did warn him. When Devontae Smith starts playing against better linebackers, he's going to fall off a little bit. 6.8 isn't horrible. It's bad, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing great. Four targets, he's at least getting your four catches. He's at least getting the targets still. No yards, though, or anything. So he, they're struggling to use him in the against these better defenses. But good news for you, Mr. PMC. Washington's linebackers are also dog shit, just like the first two games, unlike the third game. So expect a big game from Devontae Smith yet again. So I'm expecting him to do pretty good, but say like down the road, say week six against the Jets when they play C.J. Mosley, yeah, I expect Devontae Smith to fall back down again. But it, it's basically a matchup basis for this guy. You'll find that out as the season goes on, but I think he'll do good this week. Um, and then you have Brandon Ayuk, who I don't know if he's confirmed to be playing, but he's playing against Arizona, which is a pretty good matchup. Uh, their defense sucks. Unless they're playing Dallas, of course, then fucking Mr. Clean, the mixed guy, turns into Jesus. But... Ayuk had 35 points week one, week two he had 7.3, which don't be deceived, he got hurt in that game. I don't remember exactly how far into it he did get hurt, but it's still worth mentioning he probably could have gotten a decent amount of more points. So I wouldn't be too worried about Brandon Ayuk. I think he'll do pretty damn good. He's done good so far throughout the season, if he plays, that is. Um, and then PMC also has DJ Moore, who is... He's... Going against Pat Sertain and these Broncos and the Bears offense just doesn't exist. Fucking Justin Fields, if anybody watched that game, looked like Tua last week where he was getting up and he looked like he didn't know where he was. He looked like he needed help from his teammates to get off the field. Yeah, that was kind of bad, but you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie, PMC. You really might want to consider benching DJ more this week. The Broncos defense is not as bad as Miami made them look. Miami just has the fucking uh, 2017 Golden State Warriors out there. So overall, I really would not like starting DJ more this week. Maybe in future weeks, I think he might be one of those guys you could go in there and start or 
something like that, or if somebody else wants to try to trade low and take a gamble on him, maybe, but for this week, I'm not liking this at all. Um, I think the Broncos' offense is bad enough to where the Bears probably won't be able to get those garbage time catches like they've been getting. Um, but I think it's still going to be a close game. The Bears are going to get their ass kicked, don't get me wrong, but I think it's just going to be more of a defensive type game because both offenses are just horrible. So we'll see. I'll let you know in the whole start bench video, but I'm not a fan of DJ Moore for this week to say the least. Um, and then PMC also had the addition of Garrett Wilson, who's going to be using Zach Wilson as his quarterback. So it's hard to trust him too. Uh, week three, he did eh, nine points, five for 48. Week two, he had 22 points. Don't be deceived though, because that was two catches for 83 yards. He got bailed out on one huge breakoff play. But week one, he did eh, with a touchdown kind of saving his week. So yeah, Garrett Wilson is looking like a guy who's touchdown reliant to be good. But, yeah, overall, it's not, I, to be honest, it's really not looking good for your receivers. You both have some pretty tough matchups here looking in at it. I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'll think about it a bit more for the start bench video tomorrow. I'll talk to you guys both about it. Um, but if I had to lean towards one way or another with these receivers, I would lean the edge towards, eh, yeah, I would lean the edge towards probably PMC. Just because I think Drake London is not going to do shit. Marquise Brown is going to be going up against a crazy good defense. Well, actually, I take it back. It's going to be a situation just like we were just talking about where PMC has the better overall guys, but Rictatorship has more people, so I'm going to say they're going to be a bit better in the matchup. But PMC definitely has the more quality, at least with the matchups this week especially. But Drake London is really dragging down the receiving core for dictatorship here, I'm not going to lie. The other three are solid, though, except for the defensive part for Marquise Brown. Um, and then we'll move right on in to... Did I say which... Or I, I just realized I didn't even say what position they were ranked in the video. Uh, Rictatorship was ranked 8th, PMC was ranked 4th. Um, and then we'll go on to tight end. Oh, I did not mean to do that. We'll go on to tight end. Rictatorship had TJ or has TJ Hawkinson. He's ranked uh, second in the league. TJ Hawkinson has been one of the most consistent tight ends in fantasy, so pretty good for him. 11 and a half, 11.8, 25.6. Um, he would have had more week three, but he did lose a fumble, so that cost him quite a bit. But overall, he's been one of the best tight ends in all of fantasy. I think he might actually be the highest scoring tight end in fantasy. I could be wrong on that one, but I think he is. Um, but yeah, he's he's pretty good. He's probably one of the better starters you can get out there. He has a very good matchup this week, too, where he's playing against the Panthers. Now, if this was last week, I would say this is a bad matchup. The Panthers actually just lost their right outside linebacker, uh, Shaq Thompson, who was owned by Scrambled and Wiggle Waggled. Uh, he was very good in terms of the coverage, so now they're using a backup guy who's going to be covering TJ Hawkinson. I think TJ Hawkinson is going to be cooking up. This might be a weak week or a... Bad week for Justin Jefferson compared to how good he usually does. I think this is going to be a big Hawkinson week. That's a very good matchup for Rictatorship here. While PMC in the tight end video was ranked 12th because, you know, he had no upside at the start of the season. I had to go in there and revamp his tight end core because it was just looking so bad. So I had to take Travis Kelce off his hands. I gave him a quality tight end in Mark Andrews, who has been dog shit so far throughout the season. Um... <laughs> Who, who had zero points week one because he was hurt, but week two he had 15 points. That was a solid performance. Week three he only had seven and a half, which is a little concerning, but overall he seems more tight end reliant than anything, but at least you know he'll be somewhat consistent. Uh, he is playing against the Browns, which is a good matchup. Again, the Browns have really good corners, not really great linebackers, so I think they'll both have good matchups here. If I had to lean one way or another, I would lean towards Hawkinson just because his floor is higher, but they each have a pretty high ceiling as well going into this. But it'll be pretty good to watch. That's a good tight end matchup. Um, then we had kickers. Uh, Rick Tatership has Evan McPherson, who did terrible week one and two, got 23 week three. It depends on the Bengals' offense and if they decide to show the fuck up. If they show up, he'll be very good. Um... He was ranked 8th in the video, but 
The Rams offense is looking better and better, so I don't think he'll put up 23 points a week, but he'll probably start putting up around 10 to 15 if the Rams offense continues to be consistent. But if they look as bad as they did those first two weeks, yeah, expect a lot more of the five, six games. While PMC dropped their former guy, uh, I think it was Myers for the uh, Seahawks, I believe. Um, and he picked up Aubrey for the Cowboys. Aubrey's been looking pretty good, pretty consistent, 9-21-12. Um, he is playing against the decently tough New England team, but I actually think that's going to be a good thing. I think the Cowboys are going to be struggling to score touchdowns in this game while they will be kicking a lot of field goals because New England does have a very, very good red zone defense. I don't know if that's why PMC picked them up, but it is a very good thing to know, um, at least for PMC here. So in terms of the kicking game, I'm actually going to lean towards Aubrey uh, for PMC here because I think the Bengals are going to be scoring quite a few touchdowns, and I think Aubrey's going to be getting a shit ton of field goal attempts. And I think that's also going to fuck with Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb a bit with these touchdowns, but I guess only time can tell. It's gonna. I think that whole matchup there from the offense versus defense is going to come down to if Lamb beats Christian Gonzalez or if Christian Gonzalez is able to lock up Lamb. That's going to be a fun one to watch. I encourage anybody who's watching the 4 o'clock games to pay attention to that. That's probably going to be one of the best matchups of wide receiver versus corner you'll get this season. It's always fun watching rookies go against uh, former college players they played against. And Christian Gonzalez is just really good with coverage. Um, and then we'll go into second. Play, uh, I had Rick Tatership in second for the team defense. He kept the same defense as he has Philadelphia and Washington. Um, Philadelphia is actually playing against Washington. Um, so Washington isn't really worth mentioning because I don't imagine he's going to start Washington, but Philadelphia throughout the season, ranked 17 overall, has done good. Minnesota went out there and had a really good offense and fought hard against the Eagles, which tampered their defense. The Patriots got some garbage time points on them, and so did the Bucks. but the defense was looking great just like they did last year. I think they'll bully this Washington offense. It's going to be a pretty damn good matchup. On the other hand, PMC has San Francisco. They're ranked right behind Rick Tatership in third. They did lose Miami, but it's not really worth mentioning here. To be honest, it's just a little bit of a thing, so you should know. Now, San Francisco, week one, absolutely shat on the Steelers. Week two, struggled against the Rams, which have had a admittedly strong offense over the year that surprised everyone. But if the Bengals' defense was able to shut them down like they did, I don't see why the 49ers shouldn't have been able to. I'll say that. Um, they did go out there and hold... Uh, well, no, they, they also got bullied by... Daniel Jones, who's basically Brett Favre plus Patrick Mahomes with the running capabilities of Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson, of course. Uh, you know, Daniel Jones went out there, tossed for 6 million yards, ran for 8,500 touchdowns. So, yeah, this San Francisco defense just sucks overall, but I think they'll start picking things up against, uh, what, what, what was I calling them, mixed Mr. Clean. Um... Overall, yeah, that, that's about it. It's gonna be. A, I think both of these defenses are due to score like sixty points plus each. So it's gonna come down to that. I think that's gonna be pretty fun to watch them just both blow up. But if either of them were to struggle this week, kind of like say Dallas did against Arizona last week, I think you're gonna be in for a fight to even have a chance in this game because I think this is crucial here that they both put up those good points. Then we'll look at the defensive line first. Uh, Rick Tatership was ranked ninth, but he did get the additions of K. Whitty Pay and Quentin Williams. I don't know who you're planning on starting. I would recommend Quentin Williams, though. I know Demarcus Lawrence has looked pretty good this season. I don't know why he hasn't done this in like four years, but Quentin Williams is usually one of the best defensive tackles in the league. He had an off week last week, but overall he's done pretty good throughout the season, thirteen and seven throughout the first few weeks. Um, I will say. I definitely recommend going with Quinn Williams, but we'll talk about that in the start bench video. Uh, either way, I either way, it's definitely a huge upgrade with K. Woody Pay and Quinn Williams for the D line. You have better options compared. I, I think if we re rank the videos, you'd be a lot higher for your D line because K. Woody Pay has been pretty damn good. Sixteen point seventeen. That's a interesting score. Seventeen and a half, eighteen and a half. He's been getting tackle solo. He's been getting sacks. He's been getting fumble recoveries. He's been doing everything. So he's looking pretty damn good. Um, PMC was actually ranked, whenever I made the D-line video, he was actually ranked fourth. 
Um, he did lose Quinnen Williams to Rick Tatorship, funny enough, and he lost Chris Granderson, which both are actually doing pretty good for the most part throughout the season, but he did gain Will Anderson, who's been a pretty good player in terms of fantasy. Week 1, 17.5 points. That week was great. Week 2 is not so great. He only had 5 points. Whatever, it's against the Colts. Very good O-line. Now, here's something that's a little bit concerning. He had 17 points week 3. Great. That, that's fantastic in terms of the points, right? But I am warning PMC here. He had good tackles. He had the assist. So that's a good 7 safe points, right? So you do the math. He has 7 points. Where'd those other 10 points come from? He had a block kick. A block kick is worth 10 points. Now, I don't care if you're the best block kicker of all time. This is not going to happen more than twice in a season from a same player, and that's being generous. This will probably not happen for the rest of the season. Do not try to rely on block kicks. So he was looking like he was due for only having seven points, which is eh. So overall, it's worth mentioning. He's probably not going to be doing as good as that 17 inflates. Um... In terms of this D-line matchup, he also has Chris Jones, who just returned last week, or two weeks ago. He's done good since. He had a sack against the Bears. He had a sack and a half against the Jaguars. Overall, I think him and Quinn and Williams are pretty much equals. We'll have to see if Rick Tatership starts him, though. And it's the same with K. Woody Pay. I'd value him at around the same as Chris Jones. Maybe a little bit more, just because he's actually pretty damn good if he stays healthy. While Will Anderson... I don't know what to make of him just because of that whole thing. He's kind of been inconsistent so far, but he is a rookie. He does have that upside. We'll just have to wait and see. So overall, I'm leaning towards Rick Tatorship in terms of the D-line matchup here. Um, we'll look at the DBs. Rick Tatorship was third whenever I made the videos, and he's only gotten fucking better. Now, he had the addition of Javon Holland, who's getting over 20 points a fucking game as a safety. 27, 21, 22. He's getting 14 total tackles, 11, 8. This dude is probably going to be the best safety in all of fantasy if he keeps this shit up. Like, this is ridiculously good. Um, I think he's... I, I'm not seeing any reason to think he's not going to do as good as he's been. He's just been very fucking good overall. Like, this is the perfect guy you'd want in terms of fantasy. Uh, so I wish you luck and stuff like that because I got him in a few leagues too. Um, and then you also have Cameron Bynum, who is another one that's been looking pretty damn consistent, 15, 24, 15, uh, 10 tackles, 15, 6, uh, yeah, he's another one that's pretty much been a tackle machine, being everywhere, doing everything, so yeah, your, sa your safeties are looking very fucking good, you might even be the best safety core in the league at this point, because we haven't even gotten into the meat and potatoes of the safety core, you have Justin Simmons, who week one had an eh, week, week two he had 17, he was hurt for week three, he's going to come back here for this matchup against the Bears, it is worth mentioning that the Bears this season haven't, oh, well actually I'm not sure, I, I was going to say they haven't allowed too many in terms of safeties, but I'm actually not certain on that, I was thinking of somebody else, I'll have to do some research, I'll let you guys know in the chat if you guys have any questions about it, but overall he's pretty good, week one was kind of iffy. Week two, or for Jalen Petre is the second guy on your bench. He was the best safety in all of fantasy last year. Uh, he did get hurt week one. Don't ignore that four points. That wasn't from him being bad. That was because he got hurt partially through the game, kind of like with Brandon Ayuk, where regardless of the points, just assume he would have gotten more. That's not that bad. Um, but he's coming back, maybe. He's questionable, so is Justin Simmons. Neither of these guys are promised. Um, but... Either way, I don't think you need to go out there and start these guys unless they show you that they are really fucking good because, yeah, these defensive backs you already have in there have literally been perfect. There's what's the meme from Homelander from the boys? Perfect. Down to the last minute detail, everything around it, these safeties are fucking correct. Um, and then we'll look at PMC, who was ranked fourth as well, when it, or fourth when it came to DBs as well, just like he was at D-line. Um... Now, PMC actually has, uh, I think his name is Reed Blankenship from the Eagles, yeah. Week 1, he had 22. He didn't play Week 2. Week 3, he had 21. He has only had two games to work with, but in those two games, he's just like Holland, where he's putting up over 20 points per game. This is a great find from PMC. 
Uh, he's getting those 12 tackles and 7 tackles. He had the interception. Uh, he ha he's getting past the flex. He's pretty much doing it all. I don't think he's as good as Holland just because he's not getting as many tackles. He's probably closer to, say, that Bynum guy that Rick Tatership has. Overall, very fucking good. These are some very good safeties. Um, you also have Brian Branch, who got 19.33, 7 and 33. This is where I'm not going to lie to you, PMC. I don't think he's going to be able to compete with some of the guys that we just mentioned. I don't think he's going to do nearly as good as the guy from the Eagles you just had, Blankenship, or the, two, the any of the four guys Rickatorship had. Um, he's had some blow-up weeks where he had a pick. He had 11 tackles week three. He had a touchdown. He had the pick six week one. But overall, his pick six week one and then week two, he only had seven. This guy's not looking too consistent. I'm not going to lie. You might want to consider finding someone else to start in his place. But... Overall, he's solid, but he's not anything compared to these other guys. This guy is merely Spider-Man in a battle of fucking Thanos versus Goku. You know, there's only so much he can do. But we'll see if he's able to keep it up. But just for this matchup, he doesn't look that great compared to these other, to these other guys. Um, and then you also have Antoine Winfield. Now, Winfield has 23.5 week 1, 7 week 2, week 3 he had 16. He's kind of he's kind of in the same boat where he should be a solid safety to have a pretty damn good one, but compared to some of these other guys that we've seen throughout the season so far that we just mentioned, he's not that great. Uh, this is a very weird safety situation where normally I'd be saying, "Oh yeah, PMC's guys are way better than the other guys," but like I said, there's there's the circle of Blankenship, Holland, Bynum, and then the guys on Rick Tatership's bench. Not not necessarily Simmons, but uh, Jalen Petre. And then these other guys are just kind of there doing their best to contribute. But that's all they can do. They're not really nearly as good as those guys. But Winfield, he's probably going to have one of the safer floors. At least you'll know he's probably going to get around 7 to 10 points no matter what. It is concerning he only had three tackles week two. That's kind of why I'm holding him back from that elite tier of safety. Um, and then you also have Jordan Poyer and Jaquan Brisker. Um Poyer, yeah, he's kind of cuttable at this point. I'm not going to lie. I already told you about all that in the chat. I'm not too big on him anymore. He, he's kind of slowed down. He's not the main tackler on that defense any longer. Uh, Jaquan Brisker for the Bears cannot stay healthy for more than five minutes, and he's just kind of uh, eh safety at this point. I wouldn't necessarily say to drop him. I mean, maybe you can if you think you need the bench spot, but he's not horrible. That that's about all I could say. That he's not really doing anything too special, nothing too flashy. He's just been he's just been okay. At least you know he's getting at least five tackles total per game. But that's about where the good ends. Other than that, he's just kind of eh. He's kind of there. But I'm definitely leaning towards rectatorship in terms of the DBs here. Even though PMC is starting three of them, I still got to lean towards rectatorships guys just because they're just so much better. Um and plus. Blanket chip only had the two game sample size. I would prefer to see a little bit more before I say for sure on that. But I guess only time can tell. And then with linebackers, Rick Tatership was ranked fifth. Whenever I made the video, he gained Demario Davis and Alex Singleton, lost Leighton Vander Esch and Eric Kendricks. Um, Eric Kendricks might not necessarily play this week, and Vander Esch hasn't done shit this season. So that's not really. Those that those aren't really that big of a loss, at least for this matchup. Kendricks is actually on PMC Wagner's team. We'll talk about him more in depth in a minute. But Demario Davis, he's usually very consistent, but last week he was not consistent. He played against the Packers and for some reason only got four points. He's usually a lot more consistent than that, as you see with the first two weeks. But for whatever reason, he just couldn't get it done this week. Um, I think he'll do good again. I don't think that's too much of a concern. Um, and then you also had the addition of Alex Singleton, who had 17 points. Weeks 1 and 2 are probably more realistically what he's going to be scoring here um, compared to what he did Week 3. Week 3 is purely because Josie Jewell got hurt. If Josie Jewell were to play this week and stay healthy, expect more of like 7 to 13 stinker games, you know what I mean? But if Jewell, if Jewell goes down, this guy's instantly going to be a very good linebacker. But for now, it's very hard to trust him. Uh, 
Yeah, then you also had the addition, or not the addition, but you also have Levante David, who I think he's going to be one of the best linebackers in fantasy. Uh, one of the better ones, at least. I, the only reason he did bad week two, and this has been a thing with every linebacker that the Bears have faced, at least middle linebacker, where you can look at any middle linebacker the Bears have played so far, and they've done barely anything. You look at Dran, uh, Drew Tranquil from the Chiefs. You look at uh, Devin White from the Buccaneers as well. You look at all the guys that um, the Packers had. They had Devondre Campbell. They had Quay Walker, who had a pick six that kind of padded his stats week one. Overall, the Bears just are really not a good team to start middle linebackers against. But overall, yeah, he's pretty much as good as you can get. Eight tackles total, 13 tackles total. He's getting sacks. He's getting tackles for loss. He's pretty much doing it all. So, yeah, he's doing pretty good. Um, and then there's also, I believe you also have, let's see here, Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner has been on a downwards trend, which is a little concerning. Um, I think he'll keep doing good. Like, week one, he had 18 total tackles. Then he dropped down to 10. Now he's down to 5. So he's downwards trending consistently, which definitely is concerning. But I do think he'll pick things back up just, just because it's Bobby Wagner, one of the best linebackers of all time, one of the most consistent ones of all time at least. Um, I think he'll pick things up, like I said. But there is always that chance that Jordan Brooks, the guy I actually have, ends up just becoming the main tackler. But either way, I think Wagner's just going to do better than he did week three with those eight points. I think that's kind of a fluke. So overall, he's a pretty good linebacker to have. And then we'll look at PMC's linebackers. PMC is going to be playing Terrell Bernard. I didn't know what his first name was. I had to look at that. Um, he's been pretty damn good throughout the season. He's been making a lot of sacks, interceptions, getting a lot of tackles. This guy's been looking very good. This guy's looking solid around the board. Um, in terms of like a matchup with Rick Tatorship, I would say he's probably going to be worse than, say, Levante David, but he's going to be a lot better than Alex Singleton. Um, so that's kind of where you can compare him, but he's been very good throughout the season. That's a very smart pickup from PMC. Um, PMC is also going to be playing Bobby Okriki. Okriki has been saying he's been consistent. He's definitely, he's pretty much been the definition of consistency where he's getting around, around say five to nine tackles per game, which is what you want to see. He's very consistent, but it doesn't look like he's doing anything crazy or special, but he's definitely consistent. That's kind of what you want. I'd say he's more comparable to Demario Davis on Rictatorship side of things. Uh, overall, he's been a lot more consistent than Demario Davis has because he fucked up that last week, but I think they'll both be close in terms of scoring. Then you have TJ Edwards, who's basically looking like the new Roquan Smith. Um, he's going out there getting 14 tackles total. He's out there getting 12 tackles total, 17 tackles. So, like, dude, this guy might actually be one of the best linebackers in fantasy, and I could see him outscoring Roquan Smith, actually. The reason I didn't want him at the beginning of this season is just because we didn't know who was going to be that main tackler in Chicago. Now it's fucking obvious. You're not going to have a guy with 14, 12, and 17. Keep in mind, most of these are assists. If some of these start becoming tackle solo, or if he starts putting up other stats, this dude could be fucking insane. This guy is definitely the best linebacker. Well, there's an argument for Levante David, but I think I actually would prefer TJ Edwards. Uh, TJ Edwards is your diamond in the rough here, PMC. He's definitely, I think, your best linebacker. That might be shocking for you to hear, but um, overall, yeah, that is exactly what you want to see. Um, in terms of the matchups and the comparison where even though Rick Tatership's starting more, I would still prefer PMCs here just because they're a lot more quality than uh, Rick Tatorships are, and you know what you're going to get from what we've seen so far. None of them have really shown a downside. And then on top of that, PMC also has Dre Greenlaw, who's questionable. Uh, he got hurt in week three, so don't really count too much on that nine points. Like I said, excuse me. Week one, he did okay with 12. Week two, he had 19. Uh, he's doing okay. He's probably just like that other guy where he was getting, where he's going to be getting a good, say, six tackles total per game. Uh, he's probably going to be relying on those, like, big plays, like interceptions and stuff like that to get great games. But overall, I'd probably keep him on the bench here unless you planned on benching, say, uh, let's say, uh, Branch here. For example, that might be one of my start bench things is I'd recommend putting Blankenship in at like the DB and benching Branch for 
say Greenlaw or Campbell or Kendricks, and I'll let you know whenever the video comes tomorrow. Um, then speaking of Campbell, he's hurt again. He's hurt as well. He got hurt pretty early on in the game against the, I believe that was the Saints. Yeah, it was the Saints. Uh, he only had a tackle solo from there, but he was getting better, 14 tackles total. So if he's healthy, he's definitely a start. He's a very good option to have. But yeah, we don't know what's going on with that injury yet, so it's hard to say much. That injury could severely hinder how his play is this week. That's something worth mentioning. So he's a risk to start. And it's the same thing with Eric Kendricks, who has the same upside. He only played week one. He got 12 points, uh, but he was playing through an injury for most of the game, so that hindered it. Um, and then he missed weeks two and three. You don't really know what you're going to get out of this guy. He has insanely high upside, but only time can tell. I can't really predict the future. If I had to guess, I'll guess he's going to be good, but I'm not going to necessarily say go in there and start him and expect like 30 points. I'm not going to tell you that because, yeah, I, I can't with Kendricks, especially since he might be playing through another injury if he even plays at all. And overall, that's our matchup of the week. It's looking like a pretty damn good one. This is going to be a fight to the end. Now, Rick Tatership is 2-0 and in matchups of the week. He took down uh, Big Yawners and Scrambled and Wiggle Waggled. This is PMC's first appearance in a matchup of the week. PMC's probably, here's my prediction, I think PMC is going to be winning this game by like 300 points going into Sunday night football or Monday night football. And then, I let, let me see, who, what does PMC have, or what does Rick Tatership have? All right, so Bob, so Bobby Wagner, fucking Bobby Wagner got this. Uh, so PMC is going to be up by like 300 points. Bobby Wagner is going to go in there and he's just going to score like 48 tackles solo, 93 tackle for losses. He's going to go in there and just win the Super Bowl for Rick Tatership. Uh, PMC is going to choke the lead yet again. It doesn't matter how much he's up by. Bobby Wagner built different. Um, so overall, that's how I think it's going to go. I think Rick Tatership's more of a fourth quarter team and PMC is more of a first quarter team. Um, yeah, so rest in peace, PMC. You have no chance because he has a guy playing on Monday night, and that seems to be your fucking weakness. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed the jokes. I came up with some decent ones in this one, I think. Um, and I'll catch you for tomorrow's video where we do the start bench recommendations. And then I'm either going to be releasing the uh, weekly transactions on Friday or tomorrow. It depends on how much time I have. I'll let you guys know, though. Um, and I'll catch you later.